wild times. He's already not paying attention. He's here, he's with us, and we are back! It's the Wild Times, episode number 78. Uh... Not my favorite episode. I haven't even done it yet, and I already know it's not my favorite episode, and I'll tell you why. Why is that? Because we're not in the studio. Uh, I like yeah. them better when we're all hanging out. Don't get me wrong. Still fun, just not my favorite episode we've ever done already. Yeah, the oh, last time we were in the Bell. studio, man. Yeah, I was yeah. go, Peter. That's what I was gonna say. The Taco <laughs> Bell, the Taco Bell adventure. Even though it turned out to be like a forty-minute uh, bonus episode on the Patreon. Yeah, it took up a good three hours of our time in the three studio. Three hours. It took up three yeah. days of my life because it took three yeah. hours in the studio and two yeah. days and, and and twelve more hours of sitting on a toilet after we were done with that. It was disgusting. I hated it. Man, I'll tell you your what, pigs though. Loved it. <laughs> yeah, dude, I love the video of the pigs eating that Taco Bell. I mean, it was so good. Twenty pounds each, and they finish yep. that shit very quickly. Very quickly, in a matter of seconds. Um, you, all right. Well, you, wait. We yeah. haven't done the intro thing. We haven't done the intro right. thing. So let's let's get into it. So it's let's the Wild Times, it. episode number seventy-eight. If you are listening for the first time, you're a nitwit because there are seventy-seven <laughs> other incredible episodes that you should go and listen to. Not to mention all the really fun stuff on the Patreon, including things like us stuffing our faces with three of everything from the Taco Bell menu. I am your host, Forrest Galante. I'm some kind of a biologist. Not a very good one, but I try hard. Joining me, the lovely Baby Yoda hatted Raytep. What's up, you, you have to go to me because the other guy that's on the podcast is literally not looking he's at texting. us. He's, he's, he's looking at the phone. He thinks, but, he's, uh, he thinks he's on an episode of the Kardashians yeah. where all they do is film them while they text each other. That's what he thinks That's is okay. Right that's now. okay. We have more audio <laughs> listeners anyways. But if you are listening to the audio, come watch the video. You'll see Pat staring at his phone. Happy to be here, <laughs> gents. Happy that the Taco Bell has finally left my system from all those weeks ago. Love you guys. So, look, I'm the producer. Go ahead, introduce me. It's important. <laughs> I mean, you did it. You did it. Yeah. And, right. and of course, the one and only, the producer, Patrick DeLuca. Hey, buddy. I, oh, yeah, I'm a TV producer. That's what I do. I come up with show ideas, and I've got one for you right now. Oh. Please. Wow. By the way, Go ahead. it stars you. I think you might like it. I love it already. <laughs> Please continue. Uh, you guys met. So, <laughs> okay. kindling. Yeah, when I said let's do brunch. Uh, <laughs> He'll do never brunch. let it go. He'll never let it go. <laughs> never. <laughs> as long as you shall live. <laughs> Mate, if you eventually do succumb to a snake bite from a night, a night adder or something like that, yeah. I will talk about that at your funeral and be like, look, yeah. now he's dead. I never said let's do brunch. <laughs> <laughs> now that he's oh, dead. I love it. Uh, uh, all right, I want to pitch this show. I want to take yeah. this out to all the networks. Judge Judy is worth over $120 million for us. Would you like to have $120 million? Very much so, yes. Okay, great. <laughs> You're, this is the show. It's okay. called Pet Divorce. <laughs> Forrest, <laughs> Forrest Galante is the judge. And it is a show where couples that are either getting divorced or having breakups that have a pet, you okay. decide, and it's legally binding, you decide who gets the pet, and they argue their case and you just do what Judge Judy does. You lob questions at him, and you decide who gets to keep the pet. I love yeah. it. I, 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 yeah. I think we should I, play I, it. I think it should be a game. I don't understand how this is not an actual show. I actually with don't the either. Th yeah, but by the way, like when he started idea. saying it, I'm like, this is an Animal Planet show. Like, yeah. Judge Judy isn't a real judge. You could put me in a little gavel and a, and a gown and sit me up oh, there and yeah. I can pretend to be a judge. Overruled. Yeah, and just yell at people. Overruled. By the, the way, hamster so goes to Sarah. Uh, Forrest, there you, go. you, you need a, you got to look at this like this is the audition. So you got to make this as good and as real as possible, okay? All right, meaning, here we go. Meaning we're, okay, got it. All right, go. uh, Meaning I'm going to send this to Animal Planet. <laughs> yeah, there's the pilot. We're recording a sizzle reel on the podcast. So this <laughs> yeah. is cool for the brosners to see how we do it. All right, here we go. Okay. -na 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 -na. On this episode of Pet Divorce, a <laughs> chimpanzee caught in limbo between Bratep and the producer. Oh, they were boy. together for five years, and they owned the chimp. And the chimp's name is Kenny. Kenny the Chimp. Lovely. Yeah. 
I like how it. you're taking notes. I'm, He's taking is notes. This is important. Can't even check. Judges take notes. They okay. write things down. All rise for the honorable Judge Forrest Galante as he enters into the room of pet divorce. I stood up for you, Judge. I just want you to know that. Oh, thank you. One point to a tap. Uh, <laughs> I follow instructions. I'm, you also I'm mimicking. No, it's very nice, but I also appreciate that one of you is properly clothed, whereas the other one of you decided to show up to court in a beer tank top. Um, <laughs> so I'm not really sure if I'm going to hold that against you or for you yet, but clearly we know, who wears, that, Your Honor. Yeah, we know who wears the pants in this relationship. Um, all right, gentlemen, I'm sorry to hear about your divorce, but please tell me about Kenny. Peter, um, you go first. I, okay. Well, so... <laughs> Kenny was, uh, you know, I'm very attached to Kenny. I brought him home uh, from a trip to wherever chimps come from. I, I smuggled him into the United States in mm. my luggage. He was able to fit uh, in my luggage, and I didn't get caught. So I'm Excuse very attached. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Are you saying that you committed the nefarious crime of wildlife smuggling to bring Kenny into the United Just States? Well, Judge, Judge, you hear me out. He was going to be uh, euthanized by a cartel of crazy uh, uh, drug dealers over there. Mm. They were trying to they were trying to use him as you know the muscle in their group. He didn't cut it. Uh, I saved his life. That's all I've I'm heard saying, enough. Judge. I've heard enough. Patrick, mm -hmm. is this the truth? Your Honor, what he's saying is partly true, in that he did smuggle Kenny home in his luggage. Um, the drug cartel. I was with Peter on this trip. Of course, it was our honeymoon. Oh, and lovely. it was until Peter decided to <laughs> basically take a bunch of random street drugs that he procured in Johannesburg. Objection, objection, relevance. You, you can't object in small claims court. <laughs> And call the judge your honor. Uh, God uh, damn it. Are you going to let him go on? What does he know? Overruled. I, I would like to hear what the objection is about, Ritap. What is well, not this is true? All, this is all hearsay. He was, the, the drug thing, he wasn't there when I picked those drugs up. He, <laughs> how are he know? But you're admitting oh, to picking shit. up drugs. Oh. That's, that's no. Patrick, Patrick yeah. please continue. Yeah, Peter, you've Your said Honor, enough. The reason I wasn't there when he bought the street drugs is because <laughs> he didn't come back to the hotel for 48 hours. <laughs> when he did, he had a pocket full of pills. Ah. To try and hide them from me, some of them, he hid them under the bath mat in the hostel we were staying in. Um, when he took the drugs, he left for another three days, ruining our honeymoon, <laughs> but returning with a chimpanzee named Kenny and his luggage. Uh, I'd also to like Kenny. to just add that I love Kenny very much, and the reason mm -hmm. I'm wearing a tank top is because I was outside all afternoon exercising Kenny. Oh, lovely. Thank you for being such a good and honorable pet keeper. Peter, I am not going to lie. When we started this conversation, I was feeling like you were the good guy. You showed up well prepared. You're well dressed. Thank you, Judge. You, you yourself brought Kenny into the lives, into your lives. It sounded like the That's natural right. person to maintain the relationship with Kenny was you. But Patrick yeah. is telling me that he's the one who's taking care of him. He's outside playing with him. And you're going out on seven day drug benders. What's the truth, Peter? No, that we were on vacation when that happened, first of all. And I'm still not admitting to the drug bender. <laughs> I couldn't deal with him but, for two days. I needed some time away. Well, and you need a lot of vacations, hey. don't you, Peter? <laughs> I let you speak, didn't I? You can't I? take a vacation so, when you have a shared chip. Judge, I just, enough, I just enough, want to point out. Wait, enough. wait, wait. wait I, let me answer your question, Judge. I what just want to say. Interrupting uh, the judge. He, he, <laughs> he claims to take care of, of Kenny. It's patently untrue. When he just said that he was out exercising Kenny, what he means is that he was having Kenny mow his lawn <laughs> and do other chores around the house because that's what he does with our chimp Kenny. I provide love to Kenny. I, I massage his back after a long day of Patrick, Pat is this true? That's enough. Patrick, he, is this true? Have you forced, have you subjected Kenny into a life of ape slavery? I have chosen to give pause. I only train Kenny through Here we basically go. positive, through positives, right? I don't punish Kenny. Kenny gets treats, okay? This is what Kenny, I have to listen to, Judge. Kenny likes loves candy corn, and I have trained Kenny to mow the lawn in exchange for candy corns. Uh, but he loves it, and I will also add that under my supervision, since our separation, Kenny is sober when he's with me. 
I I've went never... over. I went over to Peter's house. How dare you! And I'm ashamed to admit this, but I I went through his recycling bin because I was looking for condom wrappers to see if he has already moved on. There was about 16 <laughs> bottles of red wine, and him and Kenny had been together for four days, and one of them, Your Honor, had one of Kenny's hairs stuck in the little foil wrapping. <laughs> so I know ludicrous. that Kenny was slugging straight out of the bottle. Give him a glass! First Jeez. of all, Peter. the... the he, th this is crazy. He was looking in his own trash, okay? <laughs> and what he found on his own wine bottles, this is, I, I don't even drink wine, neither does Kenny, for that matter. But this guy drinks, first of all, he is the <laughs> biggest Don't liar. worry, folks. We'll move on from this bit soon. <laughs> don't no, worry. I don't want to. I'm really enjoying this. The hypothetical. <laughs> he is, you, I mean, you can just hear the lies coming through his mouth. Can't Ge you judge? Gentlemen, he's, he's gentlemen, smooth, gentlemen. What are, let me ask you this. What are the grounds for the divorce? I'll let I, you I'll, feel I mean, that, Patrick. Uh, there was infidelity on both parties on the same <laughs> night. On the um, same night. And where was Kenny with, during this night? If you were both Kenny, so busy with other people. Kenny was in the care of our uh, human child. <laughs> oh, you, you, you two have a human child. <laughs> we, we adopted on the same trip where we got Kenny. Also we also named adopted, Kenny. We adopted a son named Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> he's great. I love, he's, love he's 11. Guys. He's very capable of... How old yeah. is Kenny the human? 11 years old. And how old is Kenny the chimp? Five. He has no idea. He has no idea. I know, that's, though. That's interesting. Three and a half. Because three I'm basically half. Kenny's chauffeur when he needs a vet appointment every three days. Hey, hey Peter, what is Kenny's nice. birthday? 3-12-2018. <laughs> <laughs> That's incorrect because he's five and a half. It's three and a half. two thirteen twenty sixteen. Uh, this is this is why I'm this, so fucking glad to be rid of you, Peter. That's fine. That's <laughs> fine, Judge. I, I can't handle any more of this. This is too yeah, distressing. Judge, make your decision. You know I've said everything. Don't All right, tell the gentlemen. judge what to do. Here's what I here's what I think. You both should be held in contempt of court. This is absolutely <laughs> ludicrous. One of you is literally drinking during the court hearing. The other one of you takes so many drugs you don't remember your own son or your monkey son's birthday. I say you each get a Kenny and we move on. <laughs> you take the human. You can have the human. Oh! Uh, no, I'll take the chimp, please. The son <laughs> no, is no actually thanks. quite annoying and uh, actually doesn't speak a, a lick of English. I also won't do show. any of the chores. I, I absolutely, <laughs> I would watch this. If this was a real show, if it was Judge Judy for pet divorces and the stories were as absurd as what we just heard, I would watch this. They'd be worse. Like, how about this? They would be how worse. About it's, how about it's a three-person triumvirate? So it's all three of us in <laughs> gowns with white wigs and gavels, oh, and man, we hear genius. real cases. I think that would be like a big splashy show. I think like two, three million It'd people would watch that. Yeah, without any question. The problem more. is the people that we were that were on trial wouldn't get a word in because us three would be so busy arguing. <laughs> <laughs> They'd be like, so what, sorry, what's your problem again? <laughs> it, it's yeah. pretty much how Judge Judy works, too. She lets him talk for about I could hear seconds. the VO. It's like, Forrest understands the animal's behavior and needs. <laughs> uh, Peter... Uh, we don't know why he's there. <laughs> Classic was, funny man. I was really Peter. wondering where you were going with that. Oh, Me couldn't yeah. think of anything. Couldn't right, think Forrest. of one compliment for <laughs> old Tep. Forrest, rein us back in. Rein us in as the okay. host. Okay, yes. Oh, man. I Honestly, I could have done that for another hour. I thought that was really funny. Um, <laughs> Let us know if you like it, Brosners. We're yeah. going to pitch this to AP. Well, don't be fooled. This is not a court show about two male men who have... <laughs> sons and chimpanzees named Kenny that are getting a divorce. This is a wildlife fun nonsense humor <laughs> show. And so one thing we like to do is talk about what's in the news. What's in the news? Sir, news from the underground. Oh yeah. Yeah, baby. Okay, so guys, listen. Have you guys seen this Loch Ness monster sighting? This footage that's come out? I have not. I have okay. not either. Oh. Way to rip off Patrick's thing there. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. I'm good All right, so, so there's this guy, right? Richard Maver. He's on a camping trip, 54 years old. He's on a camping trip in the outdoors on Lake, Lake, uh, on, on the lock, right? On Loch Ness. Okay. And yeah. he's filming drone footage. 
right? And according to him, he's filming drone footage of the beach and the kayaks. And I recommend you guys watch this video, right? So yep. in the middle of his like 12 minute long video that he puts out on YouTube, there's a single, let's call it 30 second clip where the drone starts going down, 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 panning over their campsite and clear as day in the water is what looks like a plesiosaur swimming right up to the campsite. Well, we're going to have to get this, but I'm watching an ad and <laughs> it's a brutal website. So, so Forrest, well, well, Peter figures out the technology of pulling this up. Uh, what is it? What do you think it is? Well, that's the question. So, okay. When, when, what's our buddy, what's the thylacine, our buddy's name, Neil? Neil Waters. Neil Waters. When Neil Waters, quote unquote, sees a thylacine, which is, you know, the foot of your garden variety house cat um, on a trail camera, whatever it happens to be, he makes a big splash, right? He tells everybody he's discovered it and like he's the fucking shit and so on and so forth, right? And that's like a thing. Right. This guy puts out a 12 minute YouTube video where supposedly he hadn't even seen this in the clip. And a bunch of people on YouTube identify it and go, holy shit. Oh, wow. There okay. it is. Okay. So he, this is not yeah. like him being like, I filmed it, I filmed it. He put out a very dull, boring 12 minute long YouTube video. And a bunch of people watching it on the internet went, holy shit, have you seen that thing in the video? So wow. that, yeah. to me, gives it a hint of credibility. Or this guy's a fucking genius, because that's absolutely the way to be like, oh, my God, I didn't even know. Whoa, check, the, check that right. out. I filmed the Loch Ness Monster. Definitely. I always see those like on Buzzworthy, and there's always like those headlines where it's like, this husband had no idea his wife was cheating until he looked closer at this photo. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, so th there's it's that thing on the Internet. People just love to do two things on the Internet. They like to find things that other people haven't yet and be the first to do it. And then they like to prove people wrong. So if you can get them to do either of those two things, you're going to go viral. Well, it's the secret sauce. The, he's gone viral. The strategy yeah. is genius. The question is, is it genuine? Is it real? Now, I want to turn this over to you, Patrick. You're, you know more about footage than Ratep and I combined. When you watch this clip, and I'll, I'll give you my two cents on it after you weigh in. When you watch yeah. this clip, is it real? Is it fake? Has he got something there? Has he doctored it? What are you seeing with your producer eyes? So I don't... Here's what I would say. To me, it almost looks like a sawfish. Um, so I, I think there is a plausible explanation. But what I would say is that is one of the easiest CGs to do. I mean, a, an, oh, basically in, t in TV, we have offline editors, right? And it, what an offline editor is, is like the person who just gets the story together, puts the music in, but they don't mix the sound. They don't make graphics. If there's really simple like CG, a lot of these offline editors can do it because they have a program called After Effects, right? Okay. So like something like, I did a show where there was a lot of Old West shootouts, right? Like just mm -hmm. adding the muzzle flash and the smoke from the gun is super easy. There's a plug-in where you literally click it and it looks fucking amazing. Um, oh, cool. Yeah. This would be one of the easiest things to do. A, like a good, someone who's good with After Effects could have made this in, I, I would say, no joke, probably like 20 minutes. Oh, because wow. the animal's under the surface, you see mostly a shape. There's very little detail. Um the big thing you want to look at here with this is the movement of the water because water is a tricky thing that separates um, separates a good effects artist from someone who sucks. Oh, interesting. Uh, so uh, you got got to look at the movement of the water here. So what are you seeing it's, when you when you look at it? Is the water moving the right way? Is there an argument to be say that if this is a real animal, it's too deep to be moving the water? Um, well, also, I mean, uh, let me ask you this. Well. Uh, unfortunately, because there's a fucking ad in this video. <laughs> Dude, it's so brute. <laughs> and so every time you rewatch it, it plays a new goddamn fucking ad. So, so sorry, you're, you're ad. not as interested in Velveeta cheese noodles as you are the Loch Ness Monster? <laughs> <laughs> the Loch Ness um, Monster I didn't me look at the water, but that's something I think the Brosners should, should check out if they uh, choose to look this up, this Loch Ness Monster caught on a drone footage. Um, look at the movement of the water and see, because water is usually the thing... That will indicate water or hair. 
right? Exactly. So hair, the quickest way to tell if something's a green screen shot or a real shot is look at the person's hair. Yeah. And you'll see the hairs doing weird things and it just doesn't look right. Um, but for us, this is a wildlife show. Let's presume that this is a real video. I don't think it's a plesiosaur. What could it be? Well, I don't, that is the question. I mean, the shape of it does not match any known creature. I mean, as they zoom in on it, you see sort of four legs, the long neck, the long tail. You know, there's an argument to be made, oh, it's a sturgeon. It doesn't look anything like a sturgeon, right? A sturgeon is built like a, it built like a torpedo. Um, you know, this thing has this weird square body, this long neck. And, you know, I was going to say I have a comment on it. My comment is why does this video start where it starts and stop where it stops, right? Like, if you were shooting that Good as question. a drone pilot, and I, I get, you know, I'm sure the guy's an amateur and not a professional, wouldn't you be rolling further down or wouldn't you see the thing fly away? Like, why is it just that one segment where the drone just moves for 20 seconds or whatever and then you don't see it again? You know, it cuts to the next shot. I think that's pretty questionable. That's questionable, and here's another thing that's questionable to me. It says that the guy, the the... The video is he says he was shooting some drone footage for his outdoors YouTube channel. Right. What the fuck is that drone shot? Why would you shoot that? Well, a straight down shot of the banks. It's not a beautiful shot. It's a hor- it's a horrible shot. It's a horrible shot. Yeah. So, so like I that's think not something you would be like. I got to get the drone up. Right. I think it's faked. I agree. I think it's faked. And I'll tell you, I put this on my Facebook, and I asked uh, Brosners and fans alike to weigh in, and somebody found. Peter, I don't know if you could pull this up or not. Don't feel like you have to. But on my Facebook, somebody found the exact toy that has the same sort of colors and shape that I guess is a very large toy as the thing in the video. And they're, they're, what, what this poster was saying was that this guy went and bought this toy and like basically swum it underneath the shoreline and captured this video intentionally and then you know put it out there knowing that people were going to see it. So the toy is like, it was like, because this thing's like 15 feet long. I don't know if the toy is 15 feet long. There's like a link to the toy, but I, I'm not going to lie. I, I didn't go to it. Because Would that I make won't... it even easier to, to After Effects it if it, was, uh, if it had the base of just like a smaller version of it and then just of like course. make it bigger? Yeah. Of course. Yeah, yeah. So you could, sure. you just, you're just overlaying two levels of video, right? In, in that right. case. It's also um, way easier to manipulate, right? Like. Well, what I mean by that is if I had a 15 foot, I mean, I did a thing with a 30 foot long inflatable whale, right? If I had a 15 foot toy, you know, I could put Johnny Harrington underneath that toy and he could swim around with it while I film my drone shot. Right. And because uh, I know right. he can hold his breath for three minutes. So it's like, yeah, there you go. Like that'll do that'll do the trick. Um, I don't know. It was interesting, though. And it's made a lot of headlines. No pun intended. It's made some waves. Um, and uh it would be very cool if it was real. It sure looks like a plesiosaur in the footage. It's just so... I mean, it's just so ridiculous, though. Like, You're watching it over and over, huh? Oh, well, I'm just thinking, too. Like, I, just the idea that a plesiosaur... Like, that a tiny population of plesiosaurs were the one <laughs> dinosaur that survived. It just doesn't make any sense, man. Yeah. And also, why there and, and you know... What's it eating? And, like, sure, the lock is connected to the ocean, but you're telling me that specific dinosaur is moving in and out of the ocean undetected? Like, by the way, they have have lizard brains, right? It's a dinosaur. It has a lizard brain. If you're a 30-foot, 40-foot, I don't know. I don't remember how long plesiosaurs are. They're not that big. They're, like, 15 to, like, 18 feet. Still, if you're a 15 to 18-foot lizard... You're hiding that well. Like, I've been to Komodo Island, right, where there are 12-foot-long <laughs> Komodo dragons. They couldn't hide if their life depended on it. They're not scared of anything. They eat water buffalo. They just sit there looking at you, licking their lips. If there's a 15-foot lizard living anywhere in Scotland, why is it so shy? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, well, also, I mean, okay, so it's pretty well accepted that plesiosaurs went extinct at the end of the Cretaceous period with many other dinosaurs. So we're talking right. 65, 66 million years ago right? as a result of the, the KT event. I, you know, we've obviously been infatuated with this idea, just, you know, movies, Hollywood has been certainly, that something that swims really deep in the ocean maybe could have been immune to the effects of, of this event that extincted most things that were living on Earth, 
What do you think of just that concept? No, nothing. No. So I guess the argument to be made is like the coelacanth, right? Like we thought that went extinct 60 something million years ago, but it didn't. But that's because it's a deep water fish where things are constant, right? Deep water in the ocean doesn't change. The pressure doesn't change. The temperature doesn't change. The light doesn't change. Nothing changes. So the idea of having, you know, when there was this, these great mass extinction events, the idea that any megafauna could survive it that wasn't way down deep in the ocean, you know, where it was basically protected is ridiculous. Like it just, you, you know, there's a reason you don't have T-Rexes still walking around and the plesiosaur is not really any different. You know what I mean? It still right. would be one of those large animals that would be up near the surface. So, yeah, no, I think it's I think it's pretty silly. Let me uh, throw a little trivia out to you guys. How big, so the, the KT event is what they call the, that, that mass mm-hmm. extinction that mm-hmm. essentially wiped out all the living dinosaurs the of that time. mass extinction. Without Googling it, how big would you guess the, the asteroid was that did that and they believe wiped out 80% of all species, whether land or in the ocean? I think okay. I read that it was like the size of a football field. It wasn't that big. No way. I'm going the size of the size of Texas. All right. That's too very <laughs> well, broad. Strokes. Neither of you are right. Forrest is closer to being right. It, it was fucking huge. It was six miles in diameter. Wow, that's fucking huge. It's so huge. that is it's a certainly not the size humongous of Texas. asteroid. It, that is no. huge, but if you think that that's big enough, <laughs> the size enough, of West Hollywood. Yeah, but if you think that that's big <laughs> enough to like wipe out the Earth, that's pretty amazing. Six miles, like scary. We can, I can jog that in not that much time. Do you know what I mean? Right, like right. the fact that if that hit in California, life in in Africa would die is insane. Like if you think about it, that's. That's not that big on a global scale. Do you know what I mean? But the impact totally. from that, the amount of energy brought in with that is unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, it, for it to get, I mean, I don't, it's crazy to think, though, that something must have been different because that can't get through the atmosphere these days. Ship burns up. Like, if something that size came at the Earth this, in this time period, would we be fucked too? Yeah, of no, course. Only I mean, the little stuff yeah. burns up and disintegrates, Peter. If it was big enough, it would just come on in. I mean, put it this way. I think. The super volcano, right, so Yellowstone, which people are probably getting sick of me working on it. Obviously, I'm working no, on a project. Yeah, where are you on a Yellowstone project? Going very deep <laughs> no. on it. But, but the super volcano that's underneath Yellowstone, which is nowhere near the biggest super volcano, right? Yeah. So that's why when you think of Yellowstone, there's mud pots and geysers mm-hmm. everywhere. It's all mm-hmm. being pushed up because there's a huge magma chamber underneath. It has okay, erupted yeah. before. Yeah. If it were to erupt again, it's estimated that as far as New York City would be covered in three to seven inches of ash. No way. Oh. That's from, amazing. From that. Yeah, it would cause a nuclear winter and most every living thing on land would, would die. One of these things has to happen In the whole again. world. It has it's, to. It's a certainty that it will. Yeah, it's just That's what great. time frame because it's, they're all blips. Um, Thousand millions of years from now. Why would you bring children into this world when at some <laughs> point an asteroid or something's going to happen? Did you know this? Here's a fun <laughs> fact I learned recently. The largest um, earthquake in history took place under Chicago, and it was like a 12 point something. I mean, like, wow. Jesus. Yeah, like, like ridiculously crazy. large. And according to certain geologists, like, it is very overdue for another one. And, you know, they, they haven't had an earthquake in, like, known human history in the Midwest. But the largest one in history is actually from basically right underneath the city of Chicago. And uh, <laughs> if it happened That's again, fantastic. like, the entire Midwest would be flattened from the rumblings. It's interesting yeah. that, Forrest, you and I experienced a very, very, very strong earthquake. Uh, you know, since I've been in L.A., <laughs> there's been a lot of, like, 4.5s. Did you get that one last week? There was one last week, apparently. Did you guys feel uh, it? Yeah. I didn't I feel it. I was in town. Yeah. I heard and saw everybody posting about it, though. Gotcha. Sorry. Wait, was I didn't mean to interrupt was, you. But, yeah, like, a 4.5 will give you a little, yeah. a little shake like a, or, you know, four whatever, 4.8. We went yeah. through, an, I believe it was an 8.1. Yeah. No, we, it was the largest or the second largest earthquake that year, I believe. And we were like sure. at the epicenter of it. Yeah, you should tell yeah, that story, Patrick. This. That's pretty funny. I, I don't I, know is if this the one where you're at the airport? Yeah, we've yeah. talked about it. But oh, to me, have. what's so interesting is like if, if, we, if I was home asleep and that hit, 
Uh, there's a chance I would have died, that my heart would have stopped. But because I was with you buffoons, yeah. and we had just found Fern the Fernandina tortoise, and we were walking through an airport on our way to go get some fucking screwdrivers first thing in the morning, <laughs> it just didn't we feel were. real. I was like, who gives a shit? You know? Yeah. Like, we we had such scary. a blase attitude. It was pretty funny. Everybody was running around in such a mad panic, except for the chicken cart guy. Um, <laughs> the, and we were just like, huh, this is funny. Like, I don't know. Every, we were so blase about the whole thing. We were just like, don't spill my drink. Like, I'm <laughs> yeah, enjoying yeah, it's like, my don't day. Don't spill my drink. Yeah. Shaking. <laughs> well, Keep for us, I got I got a, uh, a question on uh, a DM from a Brosner that I thought was really good. Okay. Uh, Let's do from it. Ryan Hardy, who goes by the Tan Man. Um, <laughs> and I thought Love this that. was appropriate because you were, you were telling me right before we started recording that the ivory billed woodpecker was like officially deemed extinct. Yep. Yep. Uh, nearly two dozen species of birds, actually, while we're doing what's in the news, fish and other wildlife are all set to be declared extinct and removed from the endangered species list. Uh, as that was released today by U.S. wildlife officials. So this brings me to Ryan's question, which I think is great. Uh, says, please let me know if this is a dumb question, but how is it decided if an animal is truly extinct? Hmm. Uh, no, it's a good question. I mean, because the ivory billed woodpecker hadn't been seen when we filmed Since two years 40s. ago. It, yeah, it hadn't been seen in 70 years, 80 years. Right. So, like, what what is like, okay, now it's on the list. It's a, it's a, it's a good and complex and very convoluted question and answer. So the, short, the shortest answer is... When something has not officially been documented for 30 years and there has been a genuine scientific attempt to find it, then it gets declared extinct by the IUCN, the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. So they are the governing body that labels things extinct, extinct in the wild, critically endangered, endangered, vulnerable, so on and so forth. Um, and so what happens is after 30 years, so they go, okay, the last time we saw let's say the ivory-billed woodpecker, and this is not how this went, officially. The last time we knew, without any doubt, you know, there's a video of a guy holding one, there's, there's one in a cage, whatever it is. After 30 years since then, if nobody's seen one, and a group of scientists or a scientist has gone out and looked and been unsuccessful, then we can officially declare the animal extinct. But in the case of the ivory-billed woodpecker, and this is where it becomes confusing and convoluted, you know, it hadn't been seen in 80 years officially, but every year, six or 12 people say they've seen one, right? So every single right. year, people are reporting it. So it stayed alive, quote unquote, you know, through sort of falsified sightings or, or not necessarily uh, falsified, but rather non-confirmed sightings for this X number of years, right? And then on the flip side of that, you have things like the Fernandina tortoise, right? 115 years since one had been seen. And there had been multiple, as we know, expeditions to, Fer to Isla Fernandina, but it was still technically listed as critically endangered. It wasn't even listed as extinct, even though there was only been one species. Basically because there's, what is there, 12 million species on the planet that we know about? No, no, way more than that. I can't remember, uh, of uh, terrestrial animals. And, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty hard to keep track. So it's like nobody was, like, doing the work that needed to be done to change the status of these animals. So... You know, with Extinct or Alive, with the show we did, it, that was one of the things that we sort of dug into loosely, and we never wanted to be insulting to scientists or governing bodies, but it was like, right. this is a mess. Like, there is no formula for this. There is no, <laughs> like, this is how it should be to declare something extinct or not extinct, because it's just all over the place. It's like, people are willy-nilly with the labels of like, yep, that's extinct, nope, that's not extinct, right. oh, that's critically endangered, even though nobody's seen one for 113 years, and there's only one of them in history, like... It's a mess. Like, it's an absolute <laughs> yeah. fucking mess. Yeah. yeah. That's I was looking. I was looking at a list of, you know, because you always hear about new species getting discovered. Yep. But, like, usually it's a, you know, a tiny variation of a beetle or whatever. And so I just wanted to see, like, what are some mammals that have been discovered in the last 10 years? And, you yeah, know, obviously cool discoveries, but they're pretty much all... Uh, small. What are they called? Well, Rodents. not small, but, like... It's a, it's a bat that looks exactly like every other bat I've seen, except something's different on the toe. You know, right, it's like, exactly. Yeah, it's all this, like, speciation. Oh, that, that's kind of... And, and so, to talk about more ridiculous things in the sciences, right, this has become, like, a new thing, right? Because everybody wants to name a species. Speciation is convoluted, right? It's like how... 
you know, if something stays awake during the day and then that same animal, but living one mountain range over is completely nocturnal, you know, are those different species? Well, they behave differently. They look identical. Genetically, they're the same, but they have different behavior. Is that grounds for speciation, you know, or is that just adaptation to the environment? And so this has become like this whole thing. So there's become this sort of race for advanced speciation where people are taking things and chunking it up more and more and more and being like, hey, nope, turns out there's 30 species of this exact same looking bat because where it lives, what it eats, what time of day it operates, you know, does it have an extra toe? Does it have a longer tongue? Whatever it is. And it's kind of ridiculous because they can interbreed, <laughs> you know, they're basically the same animal. Uh, may, they might have one thing that's different about them from one population to the other, but who doesn't, right? Like, People in L.A. Yeah. aren't the same as people in, in Santa Barbara, right? We're 90 miles apart, but there's a whole different vibe, right? But that doesn't mean that we're two different <laughs> there's, species. There's clearly speciation going yeah. on there. <laughs> and they, Much more and relaxed. nobody's talking about it with humans, you know? That would be very insensitive. But, um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, so it's, I don't know. It, the whole thing's very messy. And it feels like there needs to be, you know, some sort of person or, or body that comes in and goes, here are the standards for extinction. Here are the standards for speciation. Stop being idiots. Like stop just trying to like get more grants and funding and race, you know, race <laughs> right. to get all these like things published. Just, just do what's yeah. right. And, and nobody's done that. Nobody, here's, nobody here's, does that in any, any industry. It all boils correct. down to the funding. Correct. Here's what I want. Here's where my mind goes though. Cause I was looking at these, yeah. this list of the 10 coolest mammals discovered since 2000. And it really was like, Probably the coolest one was a monkey that looked a little weird uh, that was discovered in the <laughs> De Democratic Republic of Congo. Um, okay. It's called a lamula. It's actually pretty cool looking. But most cool. of them were like a three-toed sloth or, you know, just something that was a tiny bit different. But like, you know, we know what an elephant is. It's different than a hippo. They're different. A monkey right. is different than an elephant. Right, if there right. was going to be like some big one where it's just a creature that you've never even thought about drawing... You know, like a really crazy cool thing. Yeah. First question is, could there be something like that? Like a whole new genre totally. of, of animal that we haven't discovered. So you say yes to that. If you had a gun to your head, where would it be hiding? Mm -hmm. Good question. So, okay, I'm not going to get too nerdy and sciencey here, but that's basically what the Salo was, right? There was this right. mystical unicorn creature in the Annamite Mountains of Vietnam. All Western scientists said, like, bullshit, there's no unicorn creature there. You know, people drew it. People said it existed. Everybody said bullshit. And then, uh, what the hell was the guy's name? I can't remember anymore. Um, the guy we met in Vietnam at the cafe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, I can't think of it. I can't think of it. Anyway, he's, he goes in there, goes into the Annamites, meets with this prince or sultan or whatever the hell he is, and the guy's, you know, villagers catch one. And he's like, oh, shit. It is real. You know, here is this. Right. And, and by the way, for those that don't know, the Sala is a bovid, meaning it's related to a cow, you know, mm. or a buffalo in the middle of these mount this mountain range in very populous Vietnam um, that li that basically lives in the water that looks nothing like any other known cow or antelope or anything else. So these things do. Ha and that was in 96, if I'm not mistaken, when we first described the Sala properly. So not that long ago, not 10 years, but not that long ago. Um, and that was in Vietnam, which true, the Annamite mountains aren't super populated, but Vietnam's fucking packed with people. You know, it's, it's right. A, it is a overpopulated country. So that's my very long way of saying, yes, that could exist. I think what it would be, would be a, a carnivore and, you know, a mammalian carnivore, something pretty scary because carnivores are smarter, right? They're better at hiding. They're, right. they're, they're on top of the food chain. So they're smarter animals. And I think it could and probably does exist, and it, and it does so in Papua New Guinea. It's the least ah, biologically explored go. place in the world. It has tons of speciation, real speciation, not silly speciation like we were talking about. Tons of uh, <laughs> endemism, meaning animals that live there and nowhere else in the world. It's right on the Wallace line, which BTG told us about, you know, that right. line oh, where yeah. you have all these weird animals mixing from Asia and Australia. I totally think it could be there. I totally think there could be, you know, a hyena-like creature that's depicted in all these cave paintings that people are scared of, blah, 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 that's living in Papua New Guinea that's super shy that nobody even knows about. Wow. Percep, where, where do you think it would be? Oh, man. Probably uh, living in, like, the sewers in New York. Have you guys ever seen the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? I mean, come on. Yeah, that, that could be something. something that's like a documentary. That. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a documentary. <laughs> no, that Papua New Guinea stuff, uh, is that the one we, uh, like 10 podcasts ago, they, they made a pretty big discovery there uh, with some kind of new species there. So they're all, like, isn't that one of the places where they're constantly discovering a Basically, shitload of, like... So it's it's impenetrable, just so you know. Like, the highlands of Papua New Guinea are pretty much impossible for people to get there on foot. So basically every single biological expedition that takes place there turns yeah. up like eight new species. And I'm making That's that right. number up. Yeah. But it's like every single one they come back and they're like, hey, found these six bugs yeah. that nobody's ever seen before or whatever. And uh, not that long ago, they rediscovered the Papuan singing dog, or maybe it's called the Highland singing dog. But it's a, mm. basically like a dingo that's all white that lives way up in the mountains that they didn't really know if it was real or not. They didn't really know how many there were. And they put out some trail cameras up there that I think they got up there with helicopters. And they're like, oh, there's there's like a lot of these singing dogs up here. Like, <laughs> oh, and this is like a large it's dingo. Crazy. This isn't this isn't like, you know, a small shrew running around. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, man, yeah, that's anyway, fascinating. It's freaking rad, man. I'm desperate to get there and do a proper long expedition. Patrick, what do you think? Where would it be? What would it be? Well, I, I just remember very vividly the very boozy podcast we did with BTG, and he was just obsessed with this expedition to the Wallace line. Yeah. And yeah. so, you know, but I will say, man, those Anamite Mountains, well, there are sections of Vietnam that are incredibly overpopulated. I mean, that's some of the most impassable terrain I've ever seen in my life. It's Absolutely. vast beyond wild, your wildest belief. I mean, you spend the whole day hiking to get over a ridge, and then you look, and there's 14 more ridges in front of you. <laughs> right, that are well, each know. one taller than the previous one. <laughs> right. Yeah. The, the, the people who live there the, the, in these very, very small villages, the hunters, you know, like, you know, the guy got lost when he found Sondong Cave, and it took him nine years or whatever to find it again. Right. Totally. And these wow. people's sense of direction, you know, makes us look like idiots. Yep. Um, <laughs> right. So I, I don't know. I feel like there could be something there. I think it's estimated there's like three or 400 tigers living in that mountain range, and mm -hmm. no one ever sees them. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just incredible. They just discovered, by the way, uh, there's a forest. You and I have gone trail running there, Fryman Canyon. Yeah. Yeah, I remember uh, our trail runs there. Cool, cool spot right in between like West Hollywood and the Valley of L.A. And people go there all the time. Uh, you know, small babies walking around forest. And I know about this little <laughs> backwoods track that yeah. you just don't see anybody. It's awesome. Yeah. And uh, just discovered mountain lion living in there. Really? Really. They had no idea. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Is that just the one? It out. Is that the trail where there's that painted up car back in there? Yeah. You pass by? Yep. Yeah. Dude, I've taken my dog there many times back when I lived over <laughs> I, there. Dude, <laughs> I've been I've been there with Christina and we were like running and having fun. We went late and it turned full night. And we just had I just had my cell phone flashlight. Didn't have a second thought about oh, <laughs> could be right. a fucking oh, mountain lion watching us right now. Yep. And they don't and they and they're never seen, you know? Like that's yeah. in downtown Los Angeles. Sure, they've discovered it now. How long has it been there? How long, you know, it's amazing what animals can do when they don't want to be seen. Did you guys see the footage that came out? I think a Brosner sent it uh, of the mountain lion that is like in front of someone's house and their security camera is watching as like a mom and baby are coming down the street. Mountain no. lion, it literally it. just like gets behind the bushes and and totally like they don't see it and they walk right past it dude just but you can see it full on cuz the camera's behind and it's just total it's like they're fucking they're 5 feet from this thing and he's just wow. watching them go by and it's just wow. like holy shit man it's dude, crazy I, I was walking with Jess we were in British Columbia and we were walking on this trail and i don't mean like we were doing one of like you know the forest galante gnarly fucking middle of nowhere places it was like one of those trails <laughs> where there's like little wooden bridges and like there's little like turnouts <laughs> with a bench, you know, and like a little yeah, hand railing yeah. where you look over Picnic the creek. <laughs> yeah, it was like yeah. one of those spots. And it was beautiful, don't get me wrong. And we're walking through BC and there's we're passing somebody every minute and a half to three minutes. It's like a busy Saturday afternoon, right, in British Columbia. And we're walking on this trail and Jessica goes, I think there's something in that bush. And I'm talking about 50 feet away from us, right? And there's people, you could see people in within, you know, down both sides of the trail, back behind us and in front of us. You know, there's there's 25 people on the trail. 
And yeah. uh, she's like, I think they're staying in that trail. And I literally brush her, brush her off because I know that you're not going to see any wildlife when there's that many people around, right? So right. she says this. There's like a picnic bench thing on the right-hand side, and she's uh, like overlooking the creek, and she's pointing up to, to the left-hand side. We go like another 50 feet, look up, do the like, little overlook, and then turn around and go back. And we're coming back, and she's staring up in that corner, right, where she's just seen this thing that's watching us. And she stops down the trail, and she goes, Forrest, there's something in that bush. And I look up, not brushing her off a second time, and the entire time there has been a mountain lion lying down in that bush, 25 feet off the trail, with, I'm not kidding, 200 people walking up and down this trail at any given part. And not one other people ha- person has seen it. And Jessica spotted it going down the trail, We've gone another hundred feet, turn around and come back, and it's still there, and it hasn't budged. And it was just literally sitting there, like, you know how cats do, like, on their front paws, kind of looking out through the yeah. bushes, perfectly cryptic, not moving. And I was like, holy shit. And I took a photo with my cell phone, and you can't see a thing because it's so perfectly blended in. And right, uh, right. sure enough, there was this juvenile mountain lion just sitting in this bush, watch- watching literally hundreds of people walk up and down this trail. And she was the only person that saw it. And I, me, who's trained to look for these things, didn't even <laughs> see it when she told me the first time because I like disregarded her. Um, oh, it's fucking wild. You don't even know, man. They're right there. You don't even know. It's yeah. funny that, uh, you know, like animals that live in a, basically a kill or be killed food chain, unlike us, um, they're so, you know, hiding is such a fucking priority, right? And they've developed these yeah. incredible skills to hide. You ask a human to hide, they're going either under the bed, pull, <laughs> pulling, the pulling, the sh- pulling the sheet up over their face, yeah. yep. or just like yeah. standing in a closet. We the suck standing at hiding. Curtain, the standing curtain move where you pull the curtain over, but your feet oh, are yeah. sticking out <laughs> the bottom of the curtain. It's a classic. Oh, yeah. well, what's, I mean, your, like, what's your guys' go to yeah. hiding spot in your house when you want to scare your significant other? Man, it's been a I minute. I don't do that. She gets very, very mad. I made the really? mistake once. Oh, my God. Well, it's so much fun. a couple fun. of times. <laughs> ah, I and love a good scare, the, man. I'm into it. Yeah, Dude, yeah. She gets furious. Not Dude, happening in this house. There, there's like a good amount of pranks that take place in my house. It's uh, <laughs> it's a All lot by, of fun. I'm assuming you propagate 90% of the, the pranks? 99.9. I, I think all of them, actually. I don't think they've ever gone in reverse. My favorite one I ever did. My favorite one I've ever did is we got um, a brand... So we have Cox Cable, right? Which is... It's terrible. It's awful. Yeah. Nobody should... First of all, nobody should have cable because <laughs> it's terrible. But secondly, we have Cox Cable, right? So every three months without fail, our internet goes out and, you know, something's wrong. We need a new re- re- remote replacement, whatever. Anyway, the Cox guy comes to the house and he goes, oh, you know, your, your cable box is fried. Lost everything you've ever DVR'd. Don't, you know, oh, that's cool. You're on TV, but you never get to watch your own shows ever again. Let me give you a new cable box, right? And I'm like, great. So he pulls out this kind of like fancy high-tech cable box. It's called the Contour Box from Cox, right? And he Ooh, plugs it in. Sounds high tech. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sounds no, high. It's, yeah. yeah. It's, it's like Windows Sexy. 98. It's killing it. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so he plugs Boost in the up. Contour Box, and it comes with a fancy new remote. And on this remote, we all have this now. You, you talk to it, right? You say, yeah. find the office, and it, it finds the office, right? But you have to hold mm-hmm. down a button. So we get this right. new thing. We've just gotten Alexa like three months prior. So Jessica's like used to talking to electronics now. And I tell Jessica that all you have to do is say contour and then what you want, right? And so all night, the first night, we're sitting there and I've got the remote down by like my, my thigh and she's going, contour, volume up. And I'm like looking down on my right and like turning the volume up, right? <laughs> and then she's going, Contour, channel 33, and I'm, like, looking down and hitting 3-3, right? And uh, yeah. eventually, uh, I, I go to the kitchen to grab a snack or something, and I hear Jessica going, Contour, channel 12. Contour, channel 12. Contour, channel 12. And she's, like, screaming at the TV, and the clicker is, like, sitting on the couch, and I am just... I burst into laughter. I am rolling on the floor. And she's like, what's wrong with the contour? And I'm like, nothing. It doesn't have voice activation. Yeah, that's that's a good one. She, yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. She was so embarrassed. It was so fucking funny, man. I'm rolling on the ground I, laughing I at this that. prank that I've set up all night. I, I, I've, I've always been into a good prank. And, like, when you're a kid or you're in your teens or even early 20s, like, it's much more about shock and awe, right? Oh, yeah. You got yeah. to go into someone's bedroom while they're sleeping with a mask and a knife. Like, it's, it's just go big. Yeah. I've yeah. really gotten into this small prank 
the subtle, okay. subtle, subtle prank. It's almost yeah. like the hipster mumblecore version of a prank. Um, <laughs> I literally pulled this one off last night, and it was fucking hilarious. <laughs> We're in bed. We just gotten into bed, and Christina gets up to, like, go, like, I don't know, to go do something in the bathroom, brush her teeth or whatever, right? But the room's dark. And so I just, I just changed my orientation so that my feet were up by where my head's supposed to be and my head was down by where the feet are supposed to be. And I'm just waiting and I'm just like biting my lip. I'm like, this is so great what you're doing. This is genius. And so like she is. comes out of the bathroom, light goes off. She gets in the bed. She's kind of settling in, rolls over, puts her arm around my feet. Yeah, and, then, and I can kind of feel like a pause and then she's kind of feeling around, but like she just doesn't know what's going on because it's pitch right. black. And then I just lost it and started laughing. She was like, I was so confused. Like I thought you, your head had gotten smashed or something. Yeah, but see those subtle jokes. They're so funny. They're it's simple. Good. It's clean. Yeah. It's good, clean fun. Oh, man, I love it. Well, can I tease of- something before you get into the next thing for us? Yeah, sure. Please. Retep. Yeah. Forrest and I have planned a prank on you, mate. Oh, and yeah. you're not going to know when it's coming. And we're going to film it. And we're going to release it. And it's True. going to be... It's going to go viral big time. It's going to be not, hilarious. You're not going to enjoy it. Fuck off. This is how I feel about that. Do you just do a sound effect for us queuing up that we're going to prank you? Yeah, I, okay. I'm not going to be happy when you pull the prank on me. If it if it scares me, I'm liable to get physical. Just know that. Uh, <laughs> we do. I, and I we don't have really have control over it. <laughs> you you could not take both of us on. One of us, you no, have a very I'm good not, shot. Both of I'm us. Not, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I agree. I, Pat fights dirty. I, I know that for a yeah. fact. Yeah, he's, and, he's a sand thrower kick. for sure. Yeah, I, I he's don't, a ball I don't mean kicking like, sand thrower. Yeah, for sure. Spit in your eyes. Yeah, spit totally. in your eyes. <laughs> I don't mean I don't mean that I'm going to like consciously make an effort to attack you. I just mean like if you're in the vicinity and I get startled, I'll be flailing about and my limbs are heavy, kind of thing. You know. I like that. So one of, yeah. one of the best. I, I like the word. I'm just thinking pranks now. I might have told the story before. One of my favorite pranks I ever pulled, um, and then we will get into the next thing. Uh, in college, <laughs> we told one story. Yeah. That's fun. Whatever. Who cares? I love in, it. In college, this is before the days of you know caller ID and and smart everything. Um, our buddy uh, who is annoying the shit out of us, uh, we put up a posting for like this really fancy stroller for sale in Hawaii, and we put it on Craigslist, and we're like, hey, you know, but only call between the hours of this and this, which was of course the middle of the <laughs> night in California. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, we put it up and we listed this like $300 stroller for like 55 bucks and brand new out of the box. And so our buddy's, our buddy's fast asleep and we published the listing and his phone is just blowing up constantly. And we're, we're listening through the door giggling like so little funny. kids. And eventually, like, we hear his phone go again, and we just hear him go, I don't have a fucking stroller! Yeah, like, yelling at <laughs> his cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, so good. Yeah, Dude, I got I, so I got I was on the bad end of a prank that I wasn't even involved with back when I <laughs> was working my first career job in Chicago. Um this guy was seeing this girl in the office or that worked for the company they were in separate offices but somebody had figured out how to text uh people's phones from other people's phone numbers. Okay. So, like, you could spoof the caller ID. And so somebody did some fuckery and, like, busted these two's relationship out, seemingly coming from one of their phones to, like, one of their superiors or something. Okay. And uh, because I was tech savvy and the guy who was on the receiving end of the quote-unquote prank, like, just relentlessly accused me of doing it i come in the it's got my computer they've searched the whole thing like holy my, shit it was bananas the guy <laughs> the guy was like like standing standing in front of me he's like just tell me if you did it dude just tell me if you did it i'm like i did not do it it was i was just like it was not me and my boss is like they were like but it was it was wild dude i was and i was just like but this is great now i know that this can be done so i obviously figured out how to do it and started pranking all of my friends with nice. it get to spoof well, that caller id dude that's that's a dangerous prank to be able to text oh, so you no. could text someone 
from yeah. someone else's number. That's right, dude. That's right. I mean, and uh, yeah. Is that hacking into their phone? No, no. It's just, it's just, you can spoof caller ID. It's like not secure. Uh, it's, not <laughs> it's still oh, not shit. to this day. You can still do it. So talking about pranks, it's now officially October, which means it's Halloween. Halloween is coming up. We all know that Fruit Gushers and Whoppers and Thin Mints, I think it was, are the best candies out there. Junior Mints, whatever. What the gushers. <laughs> Peter, that is not a food group for, unless you're from the Midwest, that is not something that you get to eat every day in your lunchbox. It's in okay? the same food group as bread, mate. <laughs> <laughs> um, but my point is, I think it's time. I think I know what time it is. Do you know what time it is? Time! What? The battle. <laughs> it's about a Yeah. Royale. How oh, do you feel yeah, about the baby. the stinger taking your? Uh, you used to do the drum roll and everything. Now it's just the sting. Do you feel no, like something? I been like taken it more. You? I like it more because I used to try and come up with like a new thing each time. Like I changed <laughs> the way I did the drum roll, or I'd get like right up yeah. in the camera. I was out of ideas. Like, as soon as that stinger was made, <laughs> I was so relieved. I was like, what? I'm, am I just going to smash my genitals against the camera screen? Like, what am I going to do to be original at the next Battle Royale? So the timing was actually fantastic. Uh, right. Shout out to Mim K. <laughs> Mim K, I believe, is the guy's name who made the stinger. Great guy. Hits me up on Discord all the time. Love you, man. I love it. Patrick, By the way, what real, do we got? What's the BR? I got one, oh, but real quick, I forgot I had this Brosner DM from yeah, do Patreon it. and friend of the podcast jonathan porostowski yeah hmm. uh because we did we were doing those little those little one-liner dad jokes about each other last oh, night yeah those were funny. he's got one he says joke colin what do you call an <laughs> what do you call an overweight an overweight man with a taco in his mouth diddling a monkey what do you call that for us <laughs> retap i don't know what? <laughs> yeah retap on a Is normal saturday a- night <laughs> Oh <laughs> my god, I love it, and it's true. All you right. really can't uh, beat it. Thank you, Jonathan. Here we, Here we go. Good dad joke. All right, in the theme of Halloween, this is a little different. Okay, a little different. Okay, you have to build a Halloween costume that you are going to wear. It has to be wearable, Ritep. You can't wear herpes. You cannot. You've got that is a fact. Uh, you've got a head. All right, you got a head mask that's going to go on your head. Okay. Then you have a suit. Right, it's gonna be. It's gonna go over your whole body. It's gonna cover your whole body. The suit of an animal. Okay. Then you've got one prop that you can carry with you. Okay. All three have to be from the animal kingdom. None of them can be from the same animal. What? What props do animals carry? (laughs) Okay. It's not that the animal's carrying the prop. You can you can bring a Norwal tusk if you want. Yeah, whatever you want. Whatever you want. Okay. Now you're building a costume. But here's the thing. The three of us are going to go trick-o-treating. Yeah. And uh, who's going to get the, the best candy? Who's going to get the full-size candy bar, that, that golden goose of the full-size <laughs> Snickers that is only something you heard about but never saw? So, so only he, one person. He who trick-or-treats the best shall win this battle royale. And we all know that you only get the best treats if you have the best Halloween costume. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Okay. Okay. That is I true. Like what do you mean, is that true? Of course that's true. I, I mean, every time I've gone trick-or-treating, I believe the candy was distributed evenly amongst the trick and treaters. All right, treaters. don't be so 2021, okay? <laughs> that is not how it works. When, I'm a, okay. when, I'm, when I live in a house where trick-or-treating has come, I will turn children away if they have bad costumes. I'll say, well, get out of here. That is, is nonsense. That- Forrest, is that what? because you got turned away when you tried to trick or treat when you came to the U.S. and you were eighteen? Do you remember that story? And I was yeah. went as men in black. I just went in a bad suit. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's exactly why. Uh, All right, it's look, good. It's good. I'm going to go first here. Do it. I'm going to go first. Do it. Do it. And I'm going to start with my prop. Okay, I'm going okay. for kind of a scary costume, and okay. so I want my prop to be perceived as a scary weapon, right? If you go as as an axe murderer, you bring a little plastic axe. Sure. So I, my, I'm going scary. I, in my hand, I'm going to have this sort of corkscrewed, three foot long staff. I'm going to take a duck's penis as my prop. Wow, that's something. 
Okay. I, mean, I know exactly one. what you're talking about. I have, yeah. It's it's a mess. Um, uh, yeah, a creature yeah. rolls up to you and has this three-foot-long corkscrewed thing in his hand and is like, trick or treat? Yeah. Right. You're gonna treat. You're gonna treat that creature. My God. Okay. Very nice. So Very Pat's nice. Pat's gonna be carrying around a penis. That'll. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's correct. Go, you go, Peter. You go. Well, that's correct. <laughs> I've been saying that ever since you said that. That is correct. That's that a lot is of correct. Fun. Okay. I'm gonna go. I mean, I'm gonna go with my head first. And you know, I, scary is a is a strange move. I, I don't think that's going to get you. It's not like the guys are coming to the door and giving out the candy. It's always the moms, and they want to see cute. And there is nothing cuter than a barn owl's head and face. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good. Oh so my like, god! What? What's wrong with that? If you gave me 30,000 guesses as to what you're going to pick for your head, I wouldn't Never. have gotten it. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never. I, I don't pick. know why you went bar. It is cute. It's and so and cute. you wearing it sounds awfully cute. I got to be honest. <laughs> mm, listen, and they're cheap because they're everywhere. Very common. All right. I'm going for a different approach. I am going to attempt to recreate something that has some familiarity with people already. So they don't look at me and go, what are you? What a, what a mess of a thing you've put together. Um, they're going to be like, oh, I get that costume. And I'm going to do that through the animal kingdom. Okay? It's pretty clever. Yep, mm -hmm. yep, yep, yep. So, in order to do that, I'm going to start with the head of a Red River hog. Okay? Okay. okay. Right. All right. Gotta look this up. Gotta look this up. That's okay. You can do that. Hog. Red River hog. It's got, it's got a look to it. When put on the body of Kenny the chimpanzee, <laughs> is going to feel very orcish. Okay, I put together a nice, yeah. a nice orange coated this this chimp like body, this Red River hog head, and it's got a very orcish look. And I'll circle back to uh, to my prop. Okay. So Forrest and I are both going kind of spooky, scary. Retep, you're going straight up cute with your barn yeah. owl head. What's next? Well, I mean, I'm going to stick with this theme because cuteness gets the king-sized bars. Uh, <laughs> it's a fact. I'm going with the body uh, of a hamster. Nice little chubby, just a round. I'm going to look almost like a snowman with a really cute face. And then mm -hmm. I'll have some color with a, with a nice white hamster belly. I'll tell you uh, what, if you went to the furry convention dressed like that, you would certainly get fucked. What do you Dude, think you'd Halloween is? <laughs> what do you think Halloween is? Hamster Halloween body. is just a furry convention for kids. <laughs> I, like, uh, I like where you're going. Now, here's the too. thing, Forrest. I do too. Yeah. This is what he always shoots himself in the foot with his last pick. Because right now he's always. doing very well. Very well. Yep. Okay. Nah, I'm we'll, not gonna, we'll, we'll gonna have to stay myself. tuned to see how you, you ruin this. All right, so I've got my, my staff, my, my, my mallard duck penis. I'm going to go with my head, because I'm going scary, <laughs> is going to be the head of a sarcastic fringe head. Okay, uh, wow. very nice. Very terrifying nice. fish, opens its mouth like super wide, uh, got a bunch of teeth, it's very colorful. Um, it looks like something straight out of a nightmare. I want the head of a sarcastic fringe head fish. And then for the body, I'm going to have a pretty elaborate, you know, suit of a, uh, I want the body of a bobbit worm. Oh, wow. So That's sort of like something. a, yeah, like an elegant wedding dress. I'll, I'll have sort of a trail. <laughs> so you guys will have to sort of hold that up so it doesn't get dirty as we that's go nice. house to house. That's uh, very nice. So that's, that's my full picture. I feel like that's very, very scary. It's very, All it, right. it's an obtainable look. Um, yeah. I might do it yes, this year. It's obtainable, <laughs> whatever the fuck that means. Um, <laughs> all right. All right. I think it's me, right? Yeah. I don't for, actually remember. the last one? Uh, he doesn't know how to do a snake draft anyway, no, by I the way. No, I actually don't He's remember who went next. Several times. No, I I don't don't watch, you don't so it's you. Okay. It's you. It's you. Well, I mean, it can't be all cuteness. It needs to be, it needs to have a little fucking gore, a little pizzazz. So he, he just Patrick called it. You were gonna fuck it up. Like I'm he knew it, it ahead of time. Listen, yeah, I'm not it. just saying if if I go around as a 38 year old man dressed with in an owl head and a gerbil body, people are gonna think that I'm trying to molest their family or something. No, like, you're gonna it, rub weird. genitals in the Sheraton Hotel bathroom with Minnie Mouse at the convention. <laughs> That's a wow. fact. 
<laughs> Listen. Sheridan in a hotel, bud. And you know that? who's going to be watching? Is Papa P because I'm gonna have his severed head in my hand. He's an animal, oh God, and see? he will be. I'll be carrying his head as a barn owl, hamster gerbil bodied mm-hmm. mammal That's creature with Pat's open eyed severed head with the blood and the and the esophagus and all the entrails <laughs> hanging down. Oh, okay. I have sure. Free time. Yep, All right. Yep. Well, that's no, something. No, it's getting a little pizzazz, a little scary. Yeah, I mean, I mean, in the words like of Will creep. Smith, you done done it again, y'all. You done <laughs> Listen, done it again. I, I did, did do it again. Oops. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a uh, mess. I have the, the head of a red river hog on Kenny the Chimp's body, making me have a very orcish look. The, but the prop that I'll carry is what's really going to tie it together. Because I'm going to have the tail of an Ankylosaurus, which, if you remember what those are, they're the dinosaurs with the big mace-like tail. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. With the big spike ball on the end. So yeah, I'm going to carry cool. that around like a mace. I'm going to look like a character out of Lord of the Rings. People are going to be like, oh, I get it. I get what you did here. They're going to w- reward me with many candy bars, full-size Snickers, and I think that's how I win. Nah, cuteness wins with a little bit of spazzazz. Well, you've, but you, in your situation, you've murdered a human. <laughs> oh, it's, it, I mean, it's, it could be just made out of cake. I don't know. It doesn't have to actually be <laughs> made your head. Made out of cake. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know it's real. <laughs> All right. Well, Bresner's <laughs> weigh in. Let us know who idiot. won the Halloween Battle Royale. Is it Patrick's uh, sarcastic fringe-headed creature on a bobbit worm's body? Which is, honestly, this would be a good one to draw, people. Uh, with oh, the, yeah. the The prop of a duck's penis. Which, by the way, everybody listening to this... Press pause. Go and Google image duck penis if you haven't done that. Circle back. Um, yeah, please. It, it, because you need to pause <laughs> while you're looking at something. You can't keep shut listening. Shut up, Ritep. Pause. Just pause Speaking it. of shut up, Ritep, is it Peter's <laughs> barn owl-headed hamster-bodied creature that's carrying Patrick's head around where that would have been really cute until the end? Is it, it, makes is noises it like my that. Red River hog-headed chimpanzee body that looks very orcish who is carrying the mace-like tail club of an ankylosaurus let us know weigh in leave us a review i don't think we've asked people to do that in a long time like i don't even know where you leave reviews anymore maybe on yelp (laughs) leave us a nice yelp review yeah Yeah, please do did i do that i mean just real quick though apple podcast the tail of an ankylosaurus is estimated to weigh about 50 pounds so hope you've been working out because uh i got chip strength I'm good. How are you going to carry Pat's butt tails with a 50-pound mace in your hand? <laughs> <laughs> These are the questions. These are the questions. Hey, hey, Peter, uh, did the Taco Bell video drop yet? Yeah, it's on Patreon. How did the you? Full do people video. like it's a that? Bonus pun. Oh, my God, yeah. It's got tons yeah. of comments and I, likes, I got, obviously. like, 30 DMs from people saying, like, it's their favorite thing we've ever done. Uh, really? Really? We didn't yeah. want to get sued People by Patreon, more. so we had we were by uh, Taco Bell, so we had Taco to put Bell. it on Patreon. But uh, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. We actually get outside the studio, go on a little adventure, uh, make some trouble in downtown Santa Barbara. Head over to the Patreon if you want to see more shit like that. Yep, we got we got two more studio bonus pods coming out at the Patreon uh, next what, couple weeks. What is the next disgusting thing that we have to eat or taste or or have a lot of? Let, let us know. Let, let us know. <laughs> oh, um, no, this is great. We're doing this. Uh, we are doing this episode. Some Billy Weigel, who's one of our uh, oh, Patreons yeah, and big friend Billy. of the podcast, he said, here's a live show idea. So I think maybe we do a live at some point soon. Yes, This is kind of cool. To. He says, we watched the Rio Epiporus episode of Extinct or Alive. Okay. With commentary, right? Yep. So this is something we'll have to do in the studio, or we could even just do it in your... Uh, Garage there, Forrest. Yep. He says, good. but most importantly, every time Forrest says Rio Epiporus, you either chug half your beer or take a shot. <laughs> oh, boy. Shot. We're going to need some bottles. If we do that as a live, <laughs> we need everybody on the live to have a bottle ready to go. Because that... 100%. And whoever... If, if there's First of all, there's no way I'll make it to the end of the episode. <laughs> no. um, <laughs> yeah, me yeah, neither, no. probably. No, this sounds tremendous. I'm, I'm all in. I <laughs> love this idea. He's like, there's no way I'm going to be conscious by the end of it. But it sounds tremendous. Let's do Correct. it. Correct. Let's yeah. do it. Yeah. Let's do it in the, the next studio session. Like a power hour. Yeah, let's yeah. do it. I love it. 
not in a, a long time, and it was a mess. Yeah, if you're <laughs> if you're only listening to the audio of this podcast, hey, there's a video version. It's on YouTube. Go to uh, thewildtimespodcast.com forward slash info to find the link to that and the link to everything else in a nice little uh, list for you there. Uh, check us out on Patreon. Support the show. We do uh, four bonus podcasts a month and a bunch of other shit. Um, and that is at patreon.com forward slash wild times pod wild times pod for all of the socials to find us. And guys, I got one more dad joke submitted by Daniel Shikad, a Patreon. How did the octopus beat the great white? I don't know how he was well armed. Good night. Nice. Oh, zing. Nice job. Yeah. It's a nice closing sentiment, by the way. This is fucking great. Puts me in a good mood, baby.